Alright, so everybody loves unboxing videos. There you go. That's my unboxing video of the 7006 SB. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace. Nah, 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 hold up. I'm just playing. We're going to do more stuff. Y'all, y'all, y'all know I'm just playing. Hey, what up, peeps? It's Chunky C. Hey, today we're going to look at the DLPH1 Dual Link Power Hub. Uh, in my opinion, I probably think this is the best redundant system uh, that you can get right now. This type of system, and I'll show you why. Uh, you know, right off the bat, I've already got everything set up. Uh, I've already bound my two receivers, but I'm going to show you if I can get this in the display here. Um, since I'm using two fastest receivers, I went on ahead and bound them up, and uh, I showed you in another video how to link two receivers to your Frataba but those were the TFHSS receivers these are the fastest receivers which it's a little bit easier you just select uh, dual receiver and just link both of them and you have a primary and a secondary and when I bound them I put a number two and a number one on the back of my receivers that way I could tell them apart which one was primary and which one was secondary so on the DLPH1, whenever you hook up your receivers, your primary is going to be in your um, receiver one port, which is over here, and receiver two is going to be the the number two. Um, these receivers, I set the mode on those to mode C, which is channels one through five, are your normal uh, PWM channels, and channel six is an S bus two channel. Um, I set both of those to the same mode because whenever you use S bus, you don't have to worry about how many channels your receiver has. Your only limitation is going to be how many channels your radio or your transmitter has. Uh, since I've got an 18 channel, you know, I'm good. So I set both of these on mode C. I also have another video uh, that shows how to change the mode on the receivers. If you want, you can go back and, and check that out. Um, this setup has two receivers, as you can see here, has a primary and secondary that run through S bus. It also has two batteries that it uses equal, so it has actually has ports that it plugs in on each side right here. Let's see if I can get this out of the way a little bit. Um, and this system actually switches back and forth between the two batteries. So as it uses one down and the voltage comes down, it'll switch to this one and bring it back down. When it gets lower than the other, it'll switch back and forth and it will balance them and bring them both down equally. Um, instead of using one all the way down and then using the other, uh, it'll bring them both down. Plus you can also set up telemetry in your radio uh, that'll show you the voltages of both of these. Uh, it also has one single e-switch, which if you saw my rant video about why FR Sky didn't supply one of these on their R10 Pro, um, this e-switch, uh, instead of having to run two switches, one for each one of these batteries and then into the radio, this one electronic switch um, controls the whole, the whole shebang, the whole situation. So uh, whenever you cut this one on, you can see I get green lights come on, all my lights come on, everything works, cut it off, it turns everything off. So an e-switch is what they call, it's a soft switch. So if it fails, it's going to fail to the own, onto the own mode. So I've got my radio turned on over here, so I'm going to turn on the, the thing here. Huh? We got two green lights right there on our receivers and our servos are working put this junk back in the frame here so with everything on let's say i had a failure i'm just going to pretend i'm just going to pull this switch out i'm disconnected i've still got two green lights here got green lights on my receivers everything still works so you don't have to worry about this switch failing and causing you to crash an airplane so I'm going to plug this back in here. 
if I can get it in there. All right, plugged it in, no drama, nothing happened. Turn it off, and it goes. Everything goes goes back off. That's what a a soft switch is. So let me cut this back on. I'm also going to demo uh, the receivers because you got two receivers running both of them through S bus. Uh, everything still works. So let's say, I don't know, you ejected a receiver out of the airplane, it went flying, or whatever reason, it just started smoking, or who knows. You unplug one, that's going to simulate loss of a receiver. It could even be uh, signal loss, um, or anything like that. So there you go, you still have it, still have it going there. So I'm going to plug this back into channel port channel six which is your s bus plug it back in it immediately goes green our light here turns green this setup right here uh guys is a is a really good setup um there's a lot of systems out there that are similar though they'll, they'll kind of look the same but they're not the same uh smart fly power systems um right off the top of my head to think of those are one uh, they only have one receiver. Their primary use is to uh, take the load off of the receiver. Whenever you have a large aircraft that has really big servos um, that pull a lot of amperage, um, some aircraft have two servos per aileron, um, you know, two elevator servos. Uh, that pulls a lot of current, and if it's coming through your receiver, you know, that could really draw a lot of current. Some receivers aren't up to that, and you can actually stall your uh, your servos out. So those uh, smart fly power systems and other systems like that power bank systems, they only run on one receiver, but their primary thing is they, uh, they regulate the current. You can select the current going to the servos, and uh, uh, that's their main benefit is to take the load off of the receivers. Um, now there are some systems out there that are similar, um, right off the top of my head, the FR Sky has the RB series in their flight safe, flight safe system, uh, which is similar to this setup. Uh, those have two battery connections that has smart switching. It, it goes back and forth between the two batteries. Uh, they also have multiple receiver hookup inputs through their S bus, or I believe they call it S port, S -port system. Um, I believe their RB40 actually you can run three receivers off of it. Um, but that basically, this type of setup, any system that you run across that has two battery ports going into it, and you can link up two receivers through some type of S bus system and an E switch, that's probably going to be your best system that you can get. Um, granted, it's not totally redundant uh, simply because you have everything going into one one unit, and that's the DLPH1. If this thing fries or just decides to take a crap and quit, it's just going to be a bad day, no matter how you slice it. But the chances of that would it be in solid state? You know, like I've said before, it is it is pretty slim, but there's always that chance. Um, through all my, you know, through all of my uh, digging on the internet and uh, you know, reading in forums and watching YouTube videos, I believe that this is probably about as close to a redundant system as you can get. Um, you know, there's a lot of power distribution systems out there and they put the word redundant on their product, um, but it only runs on like one battery. Uh, it may only have one receiver on it. Um, although this in my opinion, like I said, is as good as it can get. It's not truly redundant simply because it goes through one one uh, one system here. It goes through one link power hub, and if it fails, then there's nothing you can do to change it. But with that being said, guys, um, you know, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or ideas, you know, put them down in the comments section below. I'd love to know what you think. And as always, guys, until the next episode, peace.